Quincy was Liz's prom girl this morning. Do, do you have a status update on him? Yeah, he couldn't play. Um, definitely play some minutes. We'll see how he is after, you know, being out a little bit. Um, the other injury update I have is uh, Joe Harris, um, you know, with the sprained shoulder. I think with a week and a half, um, I think we're going to play it cautious and, and you know, um, probably not play him, definitely not play him for the rest of the year. It just doesn't make sense. You know, it's not, you know, terrible injury or anything. It's just, just I think, the smart thing to do. Unfortunate that he did have that injury, but just overall, what did you see out of Joe this season and the impression that he was able to make on you? Very promising, Sarah. I really, <clears throat> I like, obviously, 38% from the three-point line, that, that's important in the league today. Um, love how he competes, fits into our culture. Um, so uh, very anxious to get him, uh, you know, get him in the gym this summer and, and continue to work, continue to get better. But uh, he is a, a high-level worker, high-level character. So um, you know, it's a, he's, had, he had, he's had a pretty good season. Kenny, you guys are coming off a game of which the bench scored 72 points, um, second highest in, in the league still. What do you think has been the biggest factor for them to build chemistry? Just you have know, had so many guys in and out, but really buy into how you want to run things in, in the system that you've put in place throughout the season. Yeah, especially we've, we've thrown different guys into that into that lineup. You know, KJ's been in it, and then we, we threw Archie in there. But they, they all have the same mindset. I think they're they're you know they're guys that are fighting for for um, credibility in this league, fighting for playing time, um, and you know especially when our, our first unit is uh, maybe the energy isn't there. I think I think it's become their um, you know persona so to speak to 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 pick up our energy, and and they've done that to a I believe in Atlanta they did the same thing you know and, and we were. You know, a little sluggish, and those guys really, uh, and, and it's really the defense that's 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 the difference. They uh, have good speed. They have they have uh, they're pretty versatile. You know, throw Quincy in there now um, can can be even more versatile. So uh, um, doing a great job. Kenny, the, the two highest scoring benches in the league are yours and the Lakers, uh, the two teams with the two worst records. Do you? Draw any conclusion from that? Is that just because both teams are searching? Sure, and we're we've thrown out a ton of different lineups uh, for various reasons. Um, a lot of it because of injuries. So, uh, and we're tr probably trying more more guys um, compared to other teams in the league. So, um, you know, I'll have to study that a little deeper. I didn't know that stat, but um, I do think there's there's, you know. That has something to do with it. That we're 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 searching a little bit and trying a lot of different guys. And if I could, I know, and I'll just follow up with that. Also, I think uh, you know our starters minutes. We don't play our starters forty minutes a game. So you know, when even Brooke, you know, Brooke is our top minute guy. I don't think I think he's at twenty nine. Um, so you know, guys are getting more opportunity coming off the bench. That, that's exactly what I was going to ask. You may mentioned the other day of how. You probably manage the minutes for your entire roster as well as just about anybody in the league. You know what has that done in terms of building depth on your roster? You know and the, developing the uh, the bottom half of the roster, so to speak. Great. It was definite. It was a definite plan in place. I think uh, that was part of our, our thinking that uh, um, you know. Obviously, we want to see our first group together, and, and but we we need to see other guys. We need to see other combinations, um, and uh, you know. And I, and I thought also think part of it was, you know, understanding where Brooke has come from and understanding Karis and you know his his situation, you know, not playing in a while. And so it, so it was, you know, part of it was performance based and, and you know thinking about the future and and, and so um, I, th I think it was. I'm glad we did it. I think uh, you know we'll see down the line if it, if it helps us, but I think big picture it was a good strategy. Joe, uh, I guess uh, Brooke needs to uh, average about 15 points a game now to get this franchise all-time record. 
Uh, can, can you put some an accomplishment like that in perspective? I mean, to, to have a player own the most points in the history of the franchise is something special. Well, knowing the Nets history, you know, and, and being from New York and, and a, lot of, a lot of darn good players that have come through here. So uh, that's a, it's a heck of a, a you know, accomplishment. I, I think also it speaks to, I mean, you know, I think uh, we all identify in the past with, with guys that stay with the franchise, one franchise for a long time. And uh, I think that's, that's pretty cool that, uh, that he's done that. And then, you know, it speaks of his skill and his, uh, um, I say it all the time, he's an elite offensive center. And uh, he can do it in a lot of different ways. He can, he can do it in a post, he can do it from mid-range, elbow area. And, and uh, you know, then, you know, he's added a three-point shot. So, um, you know, great accomplishment for, for, accomplishment for him. And it's, it's pretty, uh, pretty cool for the, uh, you know, for the organization to have a guy that's been here that long and loves being here. And could you just talk to how he's kept his head in this game all season in a tough year? You know, if you, if you bullet point like highlights of the year, that's one of them. How his, his spirit, his attitude, his uh, willingness to help the young guys, his willingness to help me, um, his willingness to stick. Maybe now, obviously, we're not going to the playoffs. And, uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't notice any difference in them, and and that's that's. Uh, you said, well, that's being professional, but I, I think it's beyond being professional because uh, you know he could be looking out for his body and no, oh, I gotta you know, but he he's always pushing me more minutes, more games, and, and uh, you know that's 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 a type of program. It, it's helping our. I think it's helping our young guys. It's helping our culture, and uh, you know, like I told Brian the other day, we're going to continue to you know, play him and, and Jeremy and, and try to finish thing, this thing off in a, in a positive, positive way. As Kenny, there are players in both uh, locker rooms who credit you for helping them in ways, as small ways, in, to playing at the NBA level. I was curious, as you have made it through your own rookie season, is there anyone you've gone to uh, during the year, out in or outside the organization, to help you strategically or with psychology? I haven't, but it's on my list. And, and I know, listen, I know I have a long way to go. <laughs> I really believe that. I think uh, that's a great thing. Um, you know, about having this opportunity to realize how, how far you are from being really good, from communication to uh, in-game stuff. I know I, I can't wait like, to the off-season to improve. And uh, I, I know I have a long way to go. So it's flattering to hear that. I mean, I, I think my first goal this year was to help. It was like, it was player-centric. Like absolutely, player, um, you know, player development, um, player performance. Um, that was that was first, first and foremost, and I just tried to keep on that. But I think there are a lot of other areas that I can that I can get better at. And, and looking forward to seeking outside help because I know there's a lot of great coaches out there. There's a lot of different ways of improving than all of us, right? Trying to trying to find a way to get better. So I have a list on my on my phone to got to hit this guy, got to go see this team, got to go, um, you know, um, travel to Europe. It's always been a great, um, you know, chance for me to like, get better, um, watching a different type of basketball, being around our coaches, um, different players. So I'm excited for, for developing, you know, quote unquote, my game in, in the offseason. You, uh, I mean, you talked about the way Brooke has, for lack of a better term, bought in. On the opposite end of the opposite end of the roster, I guess. I mean, you have a lot of guys, as you point out, that are either whatever team option or expiring contracts. They're trying to make their way in the league. Uh, how difficult was it, or how important is it, when you have that many guys that you actually keep them focused and playing the right way instead of saying, "Well, I have to get mine so that somebody will want me next year and I'll I'll get paid next year." How important is that, and how difficult? Has that been? Listen, I think it starts with Sean and, and his group bringing in guys. That they've they've looked at the background. They've they've checked and they know what type of guy is this. When if when things go, um, you know, might not be the most perfect situation, and, and they still stick with so bringing in the right type of guy, and then and then having a locker room full of you know Brooke Lopez and Randy Foy and Jeremy, and I, I think that's the second part of it, and and then I think the third part of it, you know. I'll give the coaching staff a little credit. Like I think we've 
we've tried to throw guys minutes, you know, everybody, you know, I felt like last game, like Archie, you know, he's been showing good things, let's find a way to get him in, and, and KJ, let's find a way to look at him. So I, I think if you just leave them um, on the side, it's, they, they're not as involved. Um, you know, my next goal is Andrew Nicholson. Like, I want to see what he has, and, and I'm going to have to find a way to get him into games. Because I think where we are, it's important. So I think all those things are kind of helping the locker room stay stay healthy. Okay, thank you. Brian, you could go I, You've talked a couple times about how uh, opportunity is kind of one of the biggest elements in any kind of development. Um, I mean, obviously, this was a guy who was going to play one way or the other, but um, on the other side, uh, Tim Hardaway Jr., I mean, just what have you seen from him in the way he's kind of blossomed when he's had the opportunity now to yeah. either start or play major minutes or be looked for as a go-to guy and how, how good he's been since he's yeah. got that chance? Brian, I, yeah, I said that in Atlanta. He earned the opportunity. That's the thing. you got to earn it. He, you know, Bud made him uh, pay his dues. You know, and, and I meant defending the position and then, you know, getting him in the lead shape so, so Timmy really earned it. And now he's got the confidence and uh, uh, he's just taken off. And, and in that system where they, they, they um, value shooting um, and value guys that, that compete, and obviously he has, uh, you know, excellent athleticism too. So it, it, it doesn't surprise me um, how far he's come. And, and, He's had a great opportunity now, and uh, he's really taken advantage of it. 